Hello my little fish. Welcome back to Calypso's Cove where the magic is our message. It is your mistress of magic, Black Aphrodite, here again with another card chit chat. So today is currently April 28th, 2023. The sun is in Taurus and the moon is in, I believe, Virgo. Yep, should be or probably Libra, either Virgo or Libra, one of those. Don't quote me, but I know in some form or fashion I'm right. If I look super fancy, well, not super fancy, but just cute, it's because um, it's something in the water, the music festival that Pharrell is hosting. So yeah, I'm about to go out there and have some fun. But when I was getting ready, instead of like listening to like music and like getting hype, I was just kind of like in my room listening to a video put out by Cassandra. Um, I don't know if she goes by Cassie, so I'm just gonna call her Cassandra. And her name on YouTube is Cassandra's Temple. And on her YouTube channel, she goes through her journey her spiritual journey and her spiritual journey deals with sacred prostitution and the sacred sexual priestess archetype and it just really first of all i've watched her channel before um because i myself first of all hey cassie or hey cassandra <laughs> Um, I don't know what you prefer to be called, but I will be tagging you in this video. So I don't know if you're going to see it because at first I was going to DM you and just say thank you for the work that you do and your bravery and your fearlessness and really putting out the content that you put out, especially as a woman of color, because we tend to see this discourse being discussed majority with women who are white um, you know and we really don't get to experience this type of content like really like archetypes and dealing with sexuality in a way that is um, concise passionate open vulnerable um, very much so well articulated as well and just kind of takes us back to maybe even some psychology with the way that you put your work out and I think it's really powerful to see that coming from somebody that I feel is still an aspect of a reflection that I can readily process. Um, because even though, yes, all people are a reflection of you, and I still feel a lot of resonance when I watch women who are not of color talk about these topics, but it hits 10 times harder when I see a woman of color discussing this and saying something in regards of female archetypes, um, just kind of going deeper beyond maybe like ancient Kemet or, you know, just talk of certain aspects of being a person of color and spirituality because they're like almost a stereotype which is what I deal with a lot being particularly an african-american woman who is not ambiguous um, you know I deal with this notion of me not looking like how I'm supposed to look not looking like the spiritual stereotype of a black woman and that's because I'm not and I appreciate you. I'm sorry that was so long-winded, but thank you for your work. Thank you for your honesty, for your bravery. Um, because you probably, like, first of all, never seen my channel. But for those of you who have been on this journey with me on this channel, I resonate deeply with the sacral chakra with the opening and healing cleansing of the womb space reclaiming our feminine sovereignty through our sexuality through our spirituality and yes our connection to god and i feel like cassandra just has this really profound way of describing the things that i honestly go through myself in terms of my connection to god and how i connect to god and how i found myself participating in what I consider goddess spirituality and that aspect of goddess spirituality that I focus on is highly connected to those goddesses of sacred sex, um, womb healing, womb cleansing, 
womanhood, the mysteries of life and the cycles of nature and really truly, you know, resonating also with the frequency of water because it represents that mystery. I'm sorry because I like play with my hair a lot and I'm kind of like all over the place in every video you'll see that so that's nothing new but I just want to say a little personal antidote to this beautiful topic of being a sacred sexual priestess which when I first spiritually awakened which was now six years ago um, almost seven which is like hard to believe that it's been that long of me living this life and being on this path and this journey um, when I first spiritually awakened, the first thing I knew before anything else from just entirely my spiritual awakening, like some of you guys may have watched my video on how I self-initiated into goddess spirituality because my initiation literally came through trauma. I'm one of those real like wounded healer archetypes of people um, that you'll hear about that have walked the spiritual path through actual trauma there was no body around me helping me no books no anything like I did not know anything I had no idea like I literally was going through a dark night of the soul going through a tower moment whatever you want to call it my whole life was uprooting emotionally spiritually physically financially um, and I just you know followed the path I followed the path that my pain led me through. It's kind of like goddess Aranad and just kind of like going through the labyrinth, the labyrinth of your mind, the labyrinth of your body, of your spirit, you know? And the first thing that I knew when I went through the labyrinth of my spirit was, okay, you are a sacred sexual priestess, okay? No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, I, Like I said, I've watched Cassie's videos like through the years like the last year or two I'm not sure how long you've been posting videos but it feels like it's been a while it's been at least a year um, and it just was like when you were talking about I'm like talking like I'm speaking directly to her but this is like a video for all so just keep up with me and I'm sorry I'm all over the place and I'm sorry there's a freaking plane going by Anywho, Cassie Cassandra was talking about how she, all of her life, had this profound connection to her body, this profound connection to her sexuality, and always had an affinity with men and struggled um, in certain aspects with her relationships with women and her relationship to her body and to her sexuality and dealing with the shame of that and the shame of literally being a woman who garners wisdom through that aspect of herself because there's so many different ways to garner wisdom there's so many really truly that's what we're here to do right we're here to garner wisdom we're here to learn and evolve and grow and everybody does that and harnesses that wisdom in different ways and this really intimate way of using your body using your flesh your connection to other people which therefore makes you really intricately connected to your connection to God because the body is the temple and the flesh you know like um, I'm Southern Baptist so we always have communion every first Sunday where you take the flesh of Christ symbolically and drink the blood of Christ and I feel with sacred sexuality is very much so like that when you have that form of wisdom and that's how you learn things you're taking on the flesh of somebody else therefore you yourself become one of course and then you're creating so it puts you in direct connection with the creator and that's a really really powerful way to learn which is why I feel it's been so ostracized so demonized you know um, because another way to really truly colonize somebody is to demonize their most powerful aspects to study them and then make people feel find their power to be a weakness and that is something that I have struggled with my entire life struggling with finding my power as a sacred sexual priestess as a weakness <laughs> and last year when I lived in my old place um, before I moved and transitioned with my whole life 
I literally made a video before I even saw Cassie's YouTube channel. I made a video being like, hey, I am a sacred sexual priestess. I wanted to unlock and talk about this aspect of my spirituality, how it connects to mermaid spirituality, how it connects to Mary Magdalene, how it connects to Venus, and all these other aspects, how it connects to the element of water, how it connects to the sacral chakra. I wanted to make that video. And I was terrified. I literally just thought it was like kind of cringy, not really the best video, or just like I didn't make sense. I found every reason to criticize myself for putting out this work, putting out this content and talking about it. So I didn't, I didn't put it out. And I just listened to a video from Cassie's channel all the way from Scorpio season in 2022. And she was talking about, you know, a salve, giving a salve, a healing balm for the sacred sexual priestess archetype of people and how people are not going to understand us. People are not going to readily receive us sometimes. People are not going to want to see beyond the surface. And recently in my life, as I am transitioning out of my young womanhood, like young, into my womanhood, not mature woman, but just like transitioning out of young lady into woman, right? And this notion of the shame that I've been carrying for such a long time being a sacred sexual priestess, someone who helps other people legitimately awaken to their inner power. Because I completely agree with what Cassie says. Your power, first of all, you cannot be in control of yourself, of your environment. Hold up, let me say this again. You cannot control your reality if you cannot own your sexuality yeah there you go that's perfect and i haven't been controlling my reality why i have something in my hair it's really irritating but whatever i cannot control my own reality because i am ashamed of my sexuality and even with me putting out having this beautiful spiritual awakening when I was younger, a few years ago, you know, putting out this channel, putting out the content that I put out, doing the things that I do, it's still, I'm still not there. And that's why it's learning and it's understanding and it's a journey. You have to be present, so present in every moment of the journey. That's something that's hard for me because we're always in this society because I'm in America like I've said we are always looking for the big cheese we're looking for the reward even though yes we're a society that's sort of obsessed with the idea of working hard really truly nobody here in America to me really wants to work hard anymore in that type of way that we have been programmed to to build this country but we do also have this notion of the reason why we want to work hard is only because we want a certain thing we only do that just because we want something and that's the only desire that I feel like we are allowed to have we only have the desire to just want something that society deems as obtainable if you have worked hard enough to receive it in all other forms of desire can also be capitalized off of but have to remain in a corner in a box tucked away from everything else and I've done that to myself to the point where now I only attract relationships with people who find me to be inappropriate. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry I had to lean back for that because I'm just like, I've done that to myself now. By not owning my sexuality, I have put myself in a position where I don't control my reality because I subsequently allow other people's opinions of my being, of my expression, to rule my reality. And it's coming from the most intimate spheres. P 
people who I'm physically intimate with and you know and emotionally intimate with spiritually as well because once you get physical your souls are connected and I get so much shame in these relationships for being sexual for being emotional which has been a real trigger for me a real trigger because that is something as black women we are not allowed to fully express sometimes we're not allowed to show our softness our vulnerability our delicacy our delicacy that's what we're delicate that's what i'm trying to say we have that we have a fragility inside of us that people in society don't necessarily want to see they want to see us turning up maybe turking um helping serving nurturing but not necessarily being delicate not being fragile not being soft you know and they definitely will only see our sexuality and i'm not trying to say that but to me for the most part black women's sexuality is hyper sensationalized um hyper fixated on the sensationalism of the black woman's body like on some sarah bartman right like we just want so badly to see the it's almost like the black woman's body is a foreign land yeah and we want to see every aspect of it and tour it and go through it and expose like you know kind of expose all of its sacred spots but then we don't want to give back to it we don't want to nourish it we don't want to take care of it we don't want to do any of those things to preserve the country aka the black woman's body you know um am i making sense sometimes i trick myself into feeling like i don't make sense and it'll trick me into like not putting out the content tricking yourself by you know doubting yourself which is a sin by the way sometimes we don't realize we're sinning against ourselves like this is some sounds very like christian and rhetoric but because this is a spiritual channel i'm hoping you understand the metaphor behind the sin that i'm speaking on the idea of going against your divinity right and being a child of god as cassie said because we are all children in the eyes of creator we are all daughters and sons of mother father god and with that being said you know when you are doing something that goes against that divine nature by ignoring yourself by harming yourself by doubting how wonderful and how fantastic you are you're sinning against yourself and i've been doing that a lot by allowing other people's opinions of my connection to God, my spirituality, my sacredness to control my reality and feeling so much shame and fear for being this very powerful our soul, because I'll say soul instead of archetype. And I'm here to say, I've wanted to really take this channel in that direction of more, way more than just divination and being cute and talking about mermaids because my spirituality is just so much deeper. The feeling behind it is so much deeper than a trend and everything that I do is going to be in that box that I was discussing earlier that's going to be labeled as taboo that has to be put to the side, put in a corner, put on a, you know, in a certain place where only certain people will be able to have access to it. And that's okay. Because I actually have said the same thing to myself many times that Cassie has said in her videos and I keep referencing them like you guys know what she's talking about but I know you don't and I know it might just seem like I'm just coming out of left field and that's okay because she says in her, in one of her videos that not everybody is going to get it I started this video with that and I'm gonna conclude this video with that same statement I've known that for years through working with the goddess 
Yamoja. And knowing myself that I'm a walking embodiment of that soul, of that spirit, okay? My mother's 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 all have come from that. You know, I am a walking, living, talking, breathing version of my mother, an upgrade on her design, as Erica Badu would say. So for a long time, I've been a Yamaya. People see the sex, like, you know, people see the whatever. They see it, the sexuality, the voluptuousness, the beauty. And that might be it. You know, like when I'm a partner that I'm dating told me they didn't expect me to be deeper. They didn't expect it to be more to me. I'm much deeper than what they realized and with the sacred sexual priestess it's much deeper than sex it's much deeper than what people realize so thank you again last time cassie for opening me back up to that aspect of myself because now i can reclaim my channel and do the work that i was supposed to do love you Bye.